6th of January 2023, Friday. All right, guys, um, this is a little bit interesting right now. Morgan Stanley is so confident with their prediction for S&P 500. And if you've been following my this MAO video, you should know that the number they're giving is 3,000. Now, we all know that the S&P 500 now is trading at 3,800 level. And that means that we're looking at 800 points. Now, just a month ago, they were like looking at 3,000. They said that, yeah, it's a worst case scenario. But this time now, they're pretty confident. So you really need to stay tuned to all the entire MAO video today. Now, before doing anything, make sure they do a risk assessment. And today is non-farm payroll night. So go slow, because usually the market will be pretty sluggish towards the non-farm payroll. And then after that, at 9.30 p.m., it will get very exciting, very volatile. So traders go slow, yeah, for today. And thank you, Ames, for the kind sponsorship. Right, let's just recap what happened last night. Okay, so the Dow Jones was down by 339 points last night, 1% down. It really is not something that we didn't talk about it. In fact, yesterday I was reminding everybody that to be very careful of the ADB numbers because most likely the number might be better. And of course, if the, market, the number is better, the market doesn't like it because that means that whatever the Federal Reserve have been doing for their high rate hiking doesn't really makes any sense now. So what we saw across the board is Microsoft down by nearly 3%, Google down by 2%, Apple down by 1%, Amazon 2.3%. All right, so all the tech companies, the one, the big boys are all down. Tesla down by almost 3% too. The, there'll be something interesting about Tesla, I'll show you later, but uh, this is like, probably, probably we may either gonna see a bigger drop in Tesla soon, or we are getting the bottom, I'll tell you why, okay. So let's look what happened. So the Dow Jones down 300 points after the strong jobs data signals more rate hike. That's what's happening right now. Because if the data are strong, that means that the Federal Reserve has a lot of room to increase or hike interest rates. Okay? Because they really need to bring down inflation. Okay? That is their main role, right? So let's look at it. The ADP number came out 235,000. That is way above the economist's estimate. Uh, the average consensus was about between 170 to 180. So this is like, wow, way higher, right? So wages also increases more than the anticipated. And that's a sign that labor market remained hot, okay? So later in, the late, later in the day, the weekly jobless claim came in below expectation and show a drop in continuing claim. So basically people are getting rich or at least people are not poor. So all this thing tells you that the economy is okay. So that means that hiking rates is not an issue. That's the problem, all right? So now what we're gonna see is tonight, it will be the non-farm payroll, okay? The estimate is about 200,000 for December, okay? So if the number come out any higher than 200,000 today, let's say 230, 240, 250, Oh gosh, okay. Oh gosh, this is going to be a big problem. Right, so I'm going to do this for you guys, special for today, okay. I know that some people have been commenting about, hey, Kel, your new idea of putting comments uh, up for my video. Some find it, find it a bit difficult because they couldn't, they didn't want to write or they, they find it a little bit, little bit uh, hard to uh, share what their view is. So for today's video, only for today's video, I'm going to give you this little way out here, okay. Predict tonight this uh, non-farm payroll figure, okay? Just put the number in, 230,000, 300,000, 350, okay? Just do whatever number before 8 p.m. today. I will take it as you have left a comment. So it's pretty simple, right? Uh, okay, so if you actually bother to hear my video and you, you hear this part, you know what to do for today, okay? All right, so let us listen to what the guy say about the this uh, market right now because he mentioned that this Julia guy, he said that no bear market has ever bottomed before a recession and it's something that I've been saying for the longest of time. We need to see that recession. All right, let's listen to what uh, what he has to say on this video. ISI, you know, it, it's good if inflation keeps coming down, but the jobs market remains strong. We got three different points of evidence today. I, I'll include the challenger layoffs, which were also low, lower than expected to show us that this jobs market is still tight. Uh, look, I think for professionals, this is always a difficult point in, in markets to you know, acknowledge the fact that good economic news is bad uh, news for the, the stock market, and that's the paradigm we're in. And uh, look, frankly, the Fed's been very upfront about its desire to get uh, the unemployment rate to 4.7% by the end of 2023 to slow things down, to really rationalize the labor situation. But the point of that is that that kind of jump in the unemployment rate, if we get there, 
has always catalyzed a recession. So you have a 41.50 year-end price target. That that would be a pretty that'd be a rally. That, that's on the higher end. I mean, a lot of strategists aren't feeling optimistic this year. Why do you think that we can do that? So for us, it's basically a question of an expectation of a shallow, shortish recession to arrive around mid-year. And, and frankly, when you think about it from a risk-reward perspective in terms of investing, that kind of activity, and again, no bear market has ever bottomed before the recession started. So from that perspective, we don't think October was the bottom. Right. Uh, but you get that kind of activity in the markets, the catharsis, volatility spike, that clears the way for, in fact, the type of year that we expect where earnings are going to be down, but the market's up. And, and the, the thinking is that that is atypical. It's actually very typical. That's what we... All right, so this guy is looking at 4150, and you heard it himself. He said no bear market has ever bottomed before recession, and we have said it many times on this video. So we all know that this is going to be an interesting time, all right? So he mentioned the timing is that the recession will come in roughly around this mid of the year, which is something that we also mentioned. Because for recession, the official way is that you need three negative GDP to register it. So that means that even we have the recession coming in right now, uh, we need to have it like, you know, probably going to see in September than October. But the market will always react first. The stock market will always react before it. All right. So that's something that you can consider. All right. So Jim Cramer summarized it nicely. He's turned around a few times, but he actually did a pretty good job to talk about the current job data. And of course, about signaling about how the Fair Reserve will be doing with their rate hiking mode. Yeah, let's listen to what Jim has to say. All right, let's go, Jim. Everybody keeps asking, what does the Fed really want? After a tough day, where the Dow slipped 340 points, S&P lost 1.16%, and the Nasdaq tumbled 1.47%. In response to lower than expected jobless claims and a much stronger than expected ADP private payroll support, well, this is something that you and I need to address. we got to figure this out. So on the eve of tomorrow's key non-farm payroll report, you got to think, do they want to see a spike in unemployment? Is that what they want? Do they want to, keep, do they want to see you make less money? Do they want to plummet in wages? Do they want millions of people thrown out of work in a ruined economy? No, not exactly. The Fed, they got a plan. They want you to reach... For this pizza, not for this pizza. They want you to buy this coffee. Not this coffee. This cream cheese, not this cream cheese. This beer, not this beer. They want you to buy these chips, not these chips. Nuts, how about this? They want you to, well, forget these. They want you to buy these. Yeah, they want you to trade down. They want you to save money. You add the prices of the name brand goods here. You know what? You know how much it costs? $52.11. All right, so I think, fortunately, Jim Cribber didn't throw the beer. It will create a disaster in the studio. But what I'm trying to say is that he is actually telling people that they just want people to still continue to pay for their goods, okay? Still eat the same, I mean, what do you call, enjoy their, their time, but just like, go for something cheaper. That's what I'm trying to say. And of course, this is what is happening right now. The, for this Federal Reserve, they are not, def, they are definitely not going to be like, want you to get the market crash down, all right? They doesn't want that. But they need to know, they need to bring the market down lower so that inflation can really come down. So, of course, if you look at it now, S&P 500, the highest point is about 4,800 level. So, if let's say you could go down to 3,000, that means that the market has came down by at least 31% to 40%. That will be a very good time for everyone, right? Now, at the moment now, it's still pretty high. And that is what's happening right now. So, let's just move away from US first and go back to China, all right? Now, the thing is this, why people been asking, why you keep on covering on China? Because I keep on telling people this, look, the biggest exporter, all right, is China, okay? So if this market, this this China is not able to deliver, all right, or they have a problem with the supply chain, it will hit the whole world, right? Makes sense. So that's the reason why I felt that 
as long as China side is actually having more problem, okay, this will lead to more, uh, what do you call it, the US chance of recession. So let's look at what's happening right now in China. Okay, first of all, you must understand that the numbers from China, the official numbers that there's zero deaths, and in fact, it's all right, they've been zero deaths for quite a while. Look at, look, oh my goodness, okay. But then, you look at it on China News Asia, it says that the China COVID-19 statistics is underrepresented through impact of the outbreak, okay? And you can see across the board, everyone is saying that. So the thing is this, we are actually seeing a lot, a lot of this um, sharing online. Okay, there's some animation. Uh, okay, oh, no, there's some animation issue here. Okay, so what happened in China right now, right? You can see that they actually had the official saying that, okay, until today, it's all only five deaths for that particular day. But we all know that, look at the China everywhere, right? Look at all the medical department itself. They have changed their department to all the respiratory department. And of course, you can see doctors falling sick and still need to continue to work. Nurses falling sick, but still continue to work. I mean, seriously, if you look at this scene right now, you're telling me that China is okay. So all this thing tells me that as long as we, I mean, we went through COVID before, we know that the, the real hit is coming soon, okay? So likely in mid-January and, and onwards, it's all right. I believe that when the whole thing go out of control, especially during the Chinese New Year period where everybody goes back to their hometown, it will come back hard. And by February to March, it's all right. The whole world will see the impact of the supply chain issue. So one big, big problem that we all know in brewing in China right now is the uh, property industry. And we all know that many, many companies borrow billions and billions of renminbi from the bank and now they are not able to pay back okay they're not able to pay back okay it's 600 billion yuan oh my goodness this is a lot of money right so if they can't pay back what happened the bank will suffer the bank will suffer means that everything will get hit so now think about this uh, supply chain issue is one big issue and if china right have cannot take i mean cannot you know, they can't let this fall right so it's like a repeat of what happened back in 2009 whereby the federal reserve tried to hold up the lehman crisis and you know eventually someone sacrificed but then the whole economy fell really to its knees right so it's something similar so think about this right now china now with the covid issue now plus this is brewing and then us itself recession coming in it's going to be a very tough period for all of us if you ask me all right so of course with all this above reason that makes why I think that that's the reason why this uh, this Mike Wilson himself is pretty, pretty confident that he believed that the S&P 500 will be able to drop down all the way to 3,000 level. So let's hear what he has to say and hope that, okay, <laughs> whatever he say, hopefully don't happen because if that Harry happened, this is going to make a lot of people cry. All right, let's listen to him. He's over. So that's what we're going to be watching carefully. Um, we're pretty confident about interest rate sensitive areas like housing and autos. Those are pretty obvious, uh, you know, victims of the higher rates. But I think even broader speaking, we're expecting a pretty sharp downturn in consumption over the first uh, six months of this year, at least for, as a stand, as a stance in terms of profitable spending. Okay. Discounting will return as one of our themes for this year, which is why we think inflation will come down pretty sharply. So Mike, with that in mind, do you and the team still believe there's about 20% of downside at the index level here? We do. We think uh, we think three thousand is a is a very achievable number, uh, given our you know confidence on our earnings forecast. And so, and that you know, I would uh, ironically, I would say, in the absence of you know a recession, meaning companies decide to not lay off aggressively, that target uh, looks more achievable. That may sound counterintuitive, but that's the way we're mo modeling it today. So our bear case is actually kind of we avoid a recession, but not the slowdown. Right. Uh, that would be the three thousand scenario and one hundred eighty dollars in earnings. All right, that's one hundred eighty dollars earning on S and P currently now. It's about two two five level. Well, that is pretty pretty bad, right? So what basically support him? Well, if I would look at this right now, the buffer indicator, we can see pretty clear that this is working pretty fine for the last seventy years. Yeah, take a look. So this is the buffer indicator with the standard deviation. Okay, let's take a look right now. You can see that, right? It works pretty good, right? So imagine this. This is the extra extrapolation of it. Okay, with the two standard deviation, we saw the peak, right? That's back in 2000. And then if you extend it higher, incredibly, it works again, right? Back in 2021. Okay, so now the thing is this. If you look back again, if you look down, let's lower it down to one standard deviation. Okay, we are now here. Okay. So talking about historical trend line, which usually the market will come back towards it, 
All right, you can see that again. So that means that we're going to come back to here. So that is a one good reason why there is a possibility to see the S&P 500 going down below 3,005. Okay, that's the, the first set. If it goes any lower, 3,003. And of course, if Mike wasn't getting it correct, then it's 3,000. So that is something that you need to take note of based on historical pattern. Now, one thing is that yesterday, Vanda Research mentioned that the people, right, the retailer buying Tesla has reduced significantly. Oh my God, look at it. I mean, they've been buying Tesla in this manner, all right? And the Tesla share have been coming down in this manner, okay? So now they are not buying anymore or they reduced by almost like, what, 70%? And the stock actually start to bottom out in a way. <laughs> okay, so what is this? So are you telling me that retailers stop buying means that the stock will go up soon? Well, it is like that. Usually when the retail gave up, right, that is where the voice comes in and then the stock market, the stock itself will go up. But there's one more thing to note. If the retail are not buying, and the boys are still dumping. Oh gosh, that means this counter can go down way, way lower. So it's two ways to look at it, okay? So it's either going to see a recovery of Tesla back to about 130, 150 level, or you'll see Tesla going to 92, all right? So the positive note is it go back to 150 because now retails are out, that's why it's going up, or it's going to go down to 92, okay? And of course, I still think that, you know, my wildest stream, we can actually see $65. Right, I've been telling my friend about this, about Tesla going 65, and of course every time they rub on me and say that this is ridiculous, it's not possible. But I say again, I not say that it will go there, but it is a possibility. All right, so let's look at 92 first. Okay, 92 will be a good base support. If it breaks below it, then 65, we are going there. Okay, all right. So look at the home price to medium household income ratio. Now we see this before, and it's happening again. Back in year 2007, the housing bubble, you can see right here, and that was the high at the common 7 ratio. But now we are here. Oh gosh, okay. So imagine now if the US economy not doing that well in a way, and China is not going to do any good, all this is coming to hit the market, and if the housing prices are to come down, definitely the banks are going to suffer because they pay all the delinquencies, that people can't pay for their bills, and then people get unemployed, blah, 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 blah. So all these things tells you that there's a good chance that there'll be a pullback in the next few months time. Right? All these are study and data of the last 50, 60 years, okay? For you to make your own final arrangement on that. All right, so look at the technical outlook for the S&P 500 right now. Oh my God, I mean, sometimes it's really ridiculous. The number that I mentioned was 3808, right? And yesterday, again, 3808, again, there was a closing price. This is crazy. All right, so think about this right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 trading days between the price range about 3870 to 3800, 10 trading days. So with the volume picking up, okay, mm, this is where it gets very interesting. So very simple, you can look at this. If the S&P finds strength, the first target will be easily 3869, all right? That is something that you can see. Anything stronger than that, we will see all the way here and that's 3958. But if you ask me, hmm, this is tricky because the closing price is exactly at the technical level that I mentioned. Well, if it really goes down, then the first number is 37.26. But I feel that, okay, this number can go all the way down to 36.58, okay? This is how I'm seeing right now on the S&P chart, okay? Now, the thing is this, you must understand that uh, for those who are TWB trained, this is a BNB. So a BNB is a big movement bar. So it's going to be very critical, all right? If the market basically goes above it, we will see what I just mentioned, 30, 39.58. But any lower, 36.58 is really, really possible. So that's the S&P chart. Now look at the Dow Jones Industrial chart since the start of uh, 2020 April time. We do a Fibonacci all the way to the highest point, and then we have all the 23.6, 38.2, and 50%, right? So you look back again, the first time when it dropped down, you notice that it hits the beautiful part, 23.6, and rebounded, right? So that is following the Fibonacci very nicely. Then after that, when it breaks below the 23.6, look at it, it bottomed out beautifully at 38.2, right? Okay, so after that, it came back down and did a double bottom here at 38.2 level, and then it recovers back to again to the 23.6 or 32,547. Okay, so now you can see this, right? Every time when the Dow Jones breaks below this technical point, which is at 32,548, okay, this number, 
Once it breaks, it seems that there'll be a free fall, okay? A free fall to 30,000, okay? 30,000. So this is my personal bet right now. The Dow Jones trade uh, last closed at 32,930, right? So the, that means that for where we are right now, we are approximately about 300 points away from the 32,548, okay? So let's just do a bit of hypothesis trade here. If let's say I believe the market is going to go down, I can consider to do a short position right now at 32,930 example, maybe put a 50, 100 point stop loss, okay, just to protect myself. And then I wish the first level to come is 32,548. And if 32,548 really comes, then the next one number is 30,000. That is a nearly 2,500 points. Oh my God. So that is a lot of money if you know how to utilize this because there's a four contract you make $10,000. Okay, so think about this, yeah? Now the dollar is the one that I've been pretty confident and I've been telling you guys the dollar will go up, right? See, it's happening. So look at the dollar. It came down to 103.50 recently and that was a time a lot of people say it's time to sell the dollar. It's going to come down, blah, blah, blah. I say, no, nope, the dollar will go up because I believe that the recession is going to come and usually that case, you will see interest rate being hiked, all right? And I've been mad you guys, I still believe that interest rate will hit this 5.25% uh, 5.25 uh, to 5.5. And so the dollar yesterday continued. So now the dollar has pushed up. So the first target will still be here at 105.73. Okay, this number, it has to go there. Once it do that, I'm pretty confident to tell you that commodity prices will get a bit of pullback. And of course, the equity market, especially NASDAQ counter, will face some selling pressure. And of course, the 10-year yield, right, it came off recently because the the resistance at 3.9 and we all know that if the yield come down the bond price went up right so why we're buying bond again is it because we were getting worried I mean, it's possible but like i say this is not going to be too long if once the u.s federal reserve continue to say that okay let's concentrate on bringing inflation down and if let's say tonight nfp numbers is more than 200,000, i can tell you this the yield will shoot up okay the wheel will shoot up so traders you need to watch this very closely tonight yeah very very important Right, so once again, guys, thank you for all the comments that's coming in right now. Thank you, Jennifer Ho, Nigel, Kai, Brandon. All right, just continue to leave messages like this. And if I actually put a respond to you, that means that you stand a chance to dine and have lunch with me, all right? Spin the wheel at lunch, all right, this segment, okay? So please do that. Now, for today, remember that today, you, you mean, you, if you put a comment, it'll be good. But if you want to just leave the prediction of the NFP numbers, we'll go ahead, all right? But do it before 8 p.m., okay? All right, so with all this information now, let's look at the charts and see what the market has to tell us. All right, let's look at the chart right now. Okay, let's go. All right, so you can see that once again on my KFC level, the market is really, really touching it as if that, you know, this is like the most important pivot point. Right, this level, as I mentioned to you, is 33,000, all right, 031. Okay, a very important number that you need to take down. And of course, with this understanding now, as long as the Dow Jones stays above it, it can still go back to 34,000. But if it goes below, then watch out for 32,500. That's the first level that I mentioned. So take note of that. Yep. For the NASDAQ, well, you can see it has gone below my support level in a way. So that means that there is a possibility to see the NASDAQ going down below 10,000. Wow. Okay. It is all possible. Then for Hong Kong, you can see it's pretty strong right at the moment now because we all know that uh, there's some funds are entering to the China market because they believe that after COVID, things will be getting better for China. So that's why the funds are pretty strong right now over this side. Yep. All right. So let's look at the SM, our Dow Jones chart with the TWB system. Let's take a look. Okay, let's go. The Dow for today. Now, just general reminder, once again, today is the non-farm payroll night. So usually the market will be pretty sluggish. It won't move much. So go slow, yeah? Okay, so what we have right now is that the Dow is just basically toying around the between the BNB, RL, and SL level. And today, the pivot is 33,387 for pivot 1, 32,785 for pivot 2. So MLP is 33,099. All right, so basically is that if the market goes up later on, 33,099 will be the first resistance, okay? I believe that it will resist. Now, take note, this is a yellow, red, yellow, red zebra formation for TWB. So, which means that there will be big movement coming in, all right? So, I repeat myself one more time. If the market choose to go up, we will see 34,392. That is about 1,300 points from where we are right now. 
On a flip note, the downside could be as much as 31,660. So that's about 1,600 points or 1,500 points, in fact. All right, so again, all these numbers are all on screen right now. Take a screenshot of this and try to capture this run, okay? Now, KSI, pretty interesting. Despite the market coming down, our KSI turned green. Hmm, okay. So that's, that, that tells you that our indicator is very, very unique. All right, very unique. So let's just see how, can, how long can it last. But the KRW stay red and been red for quite a while, right? So that means that, okay, we're going to have a big fight between the bulls and the bears. So watch out for all this. For the NASDAQ, let's take a look now. The NASDAQ is now um, slightly below, wait a minute, I think it's like exactly at the BNB support level at 10,764. So the NASDAQ has to go down below 764 for further downside. If not right, it might be supported. MLP today is 10,837. That will be the first resistance for this for today. Yep, take note of that. S&P 500, well, it's still moving sideways, not much movement. But again, we have a yellow red, yellow red zebra formation. That means they're going to see big movement coming in for the S&P. So the upside could be as high as 39.76. The downside could be as low as 37.01. Uh, in terms of the indicator, KSI stays green and KW is red. So mix, that's why the market is still pretty, pretty sideways for time being. For Nikkei, let's take a look right now. Nikkei today rebounded strongly, okay, because the dollar yen basically went up, all right? So the Nikkei from the low end here broke above the MLP, the resistance, and now it's trading at 25989 So now you understand why when the market is above OP and above MLP, usually it's a very strong buying signal. Now, KSI and KLW both stay red. So that is where you need to be very careful, take some profit along the way, yep. Now for Hang Seng, we are really very near to the 21,525 BNB extension. So if the China market really finds strength later on, we can actually see the uh, Hang Seng going to this particular level. Now let's look at the, the China market right now. Well, pretty good. It has extended its gain and looks strong at the moment. So it has broke above, broke the trend line. And now it's testing certain areas like this point at 13,400 area. Okay, so pretty good, yeah, on the buying side. Now for oil, yesterday we saw oil basically found some support around $72. Now $71.70 is still my target level to recruit oil, okay? KSI and KW both are red, so basically tell us that there could be more selling. But uh, you can see a bit of rebound on the crude oil this morning and it's staying above the MLP. Um, basically, if this is going to be the bottom here, then the next target will be back to the BMB. SL level and that's about 76.50. All right, so traders take note. I repeat myself again. I prefer to buy at 71 dollars. I'm still waiting for this to come. Yep. All right, so that is the uh, market here. Let's look at the gold and silver market. Now, gold has came off yesterday because of a strong um, dollar, and uh, if this is continue, all right, we may see this uh, gold coming back down to about 1813 level. The BNB RL level is at 1810, 1810, yeah? That would be good. All right, boys are buying. KRW is still bullish. So now we see whether can it break above the resistance. If it doesn't, then a pullback is possible. Now, usually we have a big movement downwards like this. There will be some rebound initially, but if the market breaks below OP, the selling will resume, yeah? So take note of that. And uh, look at silver. Silver has pulled down nicely, right? Remember I told you there's a $24, very strong resistance here which coincide with the 80% uh, retracement mark. So now, as long as silver can't break above 24, a pullback is possible. And by going below the BNB RL, it is possible to see coming down all the way to $22.70. Um, for me, I already tell you guys, silver is a good buy. Any pullback is a good buy. So watch out for silver. Only thing is that the boys are still is now selling. So that means that there's some selling pressure coming in. All right, last two before we go. And this is the Ethereum and Bitcoin. Now, Ethereum has touched the 1266 extension. So now, likely, you'll take a little break. The boys are still buying. No, KCX is totally blue here and it's empty. So it's very bullish. So again, it may test the 1266 mark later, right? That is if, let's say, the, the numbers itself, right, doesn't come out as good, yeah? Okay, and then where are you, my mouse? Okay, where are you? Okay, now we look at the Bitcoin and we wrap it up for today. Now for Bitcoin, it's still moving very slowly towards the target of this uh, 17,000. Well, we saw it trip nearing to it. The high recently was 16,982. 
So now we've got $200 away. It is possible. Boys are still buying. KCX is blank. So bullishness should be able to push it higher. But if let's say tonight EDP, uh, NFP number come out to be 250, 270 or 280, oh gosh, that means that the, the possible, that means that the economy is doing very, very well. The dollar will push up higher Then probably we can see a pullback on Bitcoin, Ethereum and salt. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video and remember to leave your prediction in the comment box before 8 p.m. tonight. All right, this is Kel signing off. Have a great day. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.